What are you laughing at, clown? Oh, just somebody called me an angry elf. So that, that was, was like was six laughing. hours ago. Yeah, and someone just sent it to me again. But anyway. Why are you an angry elf? I don't know. You're I literally don't think wearing I'm an angry corduroys. Elf. Like, yeah. how could you be an angry I know. elf? It doesn't make sense. Well, but... anyway, <laughs> hi. Welcome back to the Editor's Room Podcast. As always, I'm Jackson Estwanek, executive producer of MHS News and The Messenger. And I'm Kavya Jane, co-editor-in-chief of The Messenger. And what are we doing today, Co? So we're going to answer a lot of leadership questions that our staff members submitted for us. So basically, I think Jackson and I, as many of you know, we are in unique positions because we were um, like the leaders of our staffs for like two years in a row. And so I think because of that, we are extra concerned about training the future leaders and just making sure that... Um, we're keeping up that cycle of uh, getting better and like taking on leadership every year. And so um, in the same vein, we are trying to answer questions that people who are going to lead the staff in the next couple of years have about how we have become leaders and how we practice leadership. Right. It, it's to elaborate on that. It's very unusual that um, two main editors hold their positions yeah. for two years in a row mm -hmm. and and not only is it us but it's basically every other main editor uh as well who have held their positions for two years so um this is not only answering questions that they've given us given to us through an activity but also um kind of documenting what that experience was like since it yeah. hasn't happened um many times before if yeah. at all yeah because i guess um for me personally one of my fears is that we're, we're all too comfortable with like being in charge and like mm -hmm. everyone else not being in charge and so i think right. it's important to shift that dynamic and really make other staff members see that they can be leaders and like that should be a goal for them if they want that mm -hmm. so um let's get started so our first question so we basically asked um everyone to submit questions and so i have them all printed out and just to get um my co-editor's feedback marta who we've talked about a lot um she wrote some notes herself on some of these questions so we can like include her input so i think a lot of the questions were talking about time commitment so i think we should start with that and so we have one that says how much of a time commitment is editor in chief and then we have other ones that are like similar ideas is it manageable if you have other extracurriculars and hard time consuming classes right and this is one that we answer a lot especially when we're doing recruiting efforts um the answer is it's as much as a time commitment as you make it but i think specifically a lot of these questions were geared towards editor positions mm -hmm. And the answer um, kind of becomes, all right, well, we have the one week of layout um, or like basically kind of one and a half week of, of layout, if you want to count that, where we come in and uh, get our stories done and um, and sit together and work through edits and fill in the content. Um, I guess there's also... Uh, for like section editors, there's, uh, what do you guys call those? The layout checks. Layout checks. You have mm -hmm. three of those, which basically just helps you build up and make sure mm -hmm. it keeps people accountable. Yeah. So I would say totally agree with what you said. It's really not like consistently every day I am spending an hour on newspaper at home. Definitely right. not. But it's very concentrated. So it's like during one week, which is layout week, we'll be here like every day after school until mm. like 8 p.m. Or that's what at least what it feels like. And so I think like you, if you wanna be a main editor, definitely you have to be ready to just sacrifice everything for one week a month um, mm -hmm. and really just dedicate it to newspaper. But I, I think like Mar Marta pointed out um, that like newspaper, if you are a main editor, it's probably gonna be your primary activity at school. Um, especially if you're trying to be like editor in chief or executive producer, like it's going to be, it's your main extracurricular. Right. And, and something that I also understand and I, and I feel like, um, people, um, they don't have the experience yet, um, who would be asking these questions like, Oh, I just joined staff and I'm a staff reporter. I know things are going to be opening up. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm ready for that is that like, by the end of the semester, they will be significantly better at writing stories. Yeah. Um, I know that my schedule, like my my overall school schedule is way easier than most people since I'm a second semester senior. But like you get to a point where writing a story 
mm-hmm. or or doing any type of story is not really that difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how to problem solve and and yeah. do all that, and so like your editor, totally your your editor um, requirements, the things that you have to do, mm-hmm. uh, they become not as difficult to manage because mm-hmm. they can be your priority while your stories exactly. uh, are just something that kind of happen yeah. naturally. Very true. Because I think that like for us, a lot of the time, like while we have to do the same things that every other staff member has to do, we do it in like a fourth of the time because we're used to doing it. Mm-hmm. And so most of our time is like keeping trap track of things and like just fulfilling our role as editors as well as attending layouts i do think layout is the most time consuming part it's not like us being at home writing stories not at all it's usually like group settings and so it's in that way i think it's energizing and it doesn't feel draining because we're with each other when we're spending time on newspaper yeah so the answer to that is just um varies by the time of the month yeah um the the best answer is like a couple hours a day for like one and a half weeks is the most concise answer to that yeah i think that's perfect so next question um this is more about like how did we become leaders so Mm -hmm. um let me find it yeah what makes a good leader Uh, how do you get those traits are they learnable and um let's start with that and then we'll go to the next one yeah i think i've always been uh I've always been told I was a leader um, before even I was one. I think just people in my life wanted me to be that way. But I don't think that that's how it has to be for Mm -hmm. every person. Um, Truthfully, I learn most of my leadership skills through observation um, and also just understanding that, like, since we're talking about newspaper, like, this space especially is one where you can be very um, go-getter and ask for what you want um just as an aside like i always look at the um i'm going to mizzou and i always look at the mizzou uh journalism uh schools uh instagram page and like normally most days of the week they have either an alumni or a current student or someone who's just graduated telling about their story and whatnot and most of them say you know, you have to ask for what you want. So Mm -hmm. I think like most of my leadership skills have come from asking what I want, um, asking for what I want, um, and like seeing something that I'd like to replicate and then figuring out how to do it. And then Mm -hmm. like you just obtain that skill. Yeah. And in terms of like, are they learnable? I think that like there's certain traits that we would, that it's important that all leaders have. And those are things that you can work on. Um, But I think that, that, One of the biggest things that I think is visible through our, like, staff and our leadership is that there is no one personality type that's the perfect leader. Like, not at all. I think that whoever you are and whatever your personality is, there is a way for you to develop leadership for yourself and, like, become the best leader that you can be um, while remaining yourself and not trying to act like someone you're not. And I think, like, in terms of, like, what are the most important traits to being a leader? I think it's empathy. um, And I think... I would say passion, dedication, and conviction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What would you say? Selflessness. Um, I think, like, the personality type thing, like, I feel like way back in these podcasts, we talked about, like, the whole type A, type B struggle um, that I was having, and now I'm such a self-improvement-oriented person. Like, um, I I journal every day, and part Mm -hmm. of that journal, there's, like, one just recording my day but two um like working on habits and such Mm -hmm. and um I remember like a while ago we talked about like I always felt like uh I was really abrasive and like I got things done fast and like at a really advanced pace but that kind of sacrificed the way that a type b would have better relationships like within a group setting and, Mm -hmm. and whatnot but I've really just realized that like one you shouldn't try to uh be both and you Mm -hmm. can't really be both but two like i don't i don't have to sacrifice things just because i believe that i'm a type a or or whatever um i can make that work within a group and uh and still be like a nice person and and work on like all those traits that you just said um that's just something that like silently i feel like most leaders have to go through is like where something that they just don't naturally Mm -hmm. are they able to do um 
and and then try and fill in those skills Mm -hmm. um i feel like for me like it was just like my patience and my tolerance Mm -hmm. um i was still uh also something i've talked about before is like letting go of like me having control of everything that was a thing we talked about a lot last year i want to right and i feel like i've come so far from that because now i'm i'm just kind of like okay well like they work their best and yeah and uh, uh, it's too much energy for me to go in and try and, and manhandle everything. Yeah. Um, and so now I just, I think I'm way more chill. I also have to attribute to like, I think my staff has gotten way better mm-hmm. at, at doing the things that they do and, and trying new ideas. And most of the time, like I just try to, uh, make sure that I know that everybody has something to work mm-hmm. on, but I'm not really certain of what they're working on. Yeah. Um, Which is so different than it was last year. <laughs> right, right, right. And so, like, most of the time, like, everybody's working on something. And then, like, this past week, I was so proud because, like, so much more stuff got done and people were, like, feeling proud of their yeah. own accomplishments. And I'm like, everybody's managing their time. And part of that has to do with, like, me being chiller. Yeah. And I think, like... What you said totally relates to Marta made a note and she said um, being dedicated to help other people excel. Mm -hmm. And I think like letting go is part of that because then it allows you to see other people take ownership and like just feel good about the work they produce. And that is really gratifying as a leader, I think. Right. And like part of me talking about the change is like um, sometimes I think about like uh, how do I phrase this? I'm, like, happy that I've grown in this way um, and that, like, I've seen growth in, like, other people like you and Marta and whatnot. Um, but I always feel like it comes, like, too late, you know? Like, we only have two, two-ish months left. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, how imagine how good I could have been, yeah. um, you know, a year True. and a half ago. Um, obviously, you can't roll back time. And I'm not really mm-hmm. the pers- the type of person to, like, have regrets like that because I know I couldn't change it. Um but I do think that, like, doing a lot of self-reflection in whatever form you want to do that, you know, written or just, like, within your own head, um, can help you, like, keep track of the the those, like, internal goals mm-hmm. that no one really knew that you had. Um, just, like, working on your basic character traits. Yeah. And, and that can help you look back and, um, and really see, like, oh, today, like, I felt I wasn't as good as this, but mm-hmm. really, I've come so far. Um, I saw an Instagram picture today by a guy named Michael Jonda, who, um, he does, like, design, like, user interface stuff, but he's, like, now becoming a really big Instagram personality for uh, design-type creatives is the best way to describe it. And um, he said today that, like, you should start reflecting over longer periods of time instead of like what happened to you yesterday because Mm -hmm. you'll see the fluctuations happen like this but if you look at it over a longer period of time then you'll see like the overall trend has been a positive one yeah and something you said about like character traits just being like i think that you don't need to be like okay in order to be a good leader i need to develop this leadership trait a lot of just like traits like that you just maybe want to cultivate in your normal life can help you in your leadership. And so, like, for me, I think last year we talked about this as well, like, how I was trying to be more present or I was trying to be practice more gratitude. And, like, I think that presence has now become a, a big part of my leadership. Or I try, like, I notice that I'm trying, it helps me become a better leader. And so I think just, like, becoming a better person the way that you want to be can also help you become a better leader. And I don't mm-hmm. think it's, like... There's, I don't think there's a separate category of traits that are, like, leadership traits um, that are necessarily mm-hmm. different from, like, person traits. Yeah. One thing that I think separates good leaders from bad leaders is that good leaders want to grow. Mm-hmm. Like, one of my... I feel like one of my favorite things that's happened to me in the past year is I've just become so interested in self-growth. And that's overall made me a better person, which yeah. obviously helps my, my leadership skills. Mm-hmm. Um, so this kind of relates to that idea. It's another question and it's what is the biggest struggle you have had going into a leadership position and how did you overcome that struggle? So a little bit more about like growth and development. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was definitely that, that patience. 
factor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you get that uh, imposter theory. I feel like that's such a big thing in like the creative community right now mm-hmm. where... What, what is imposter theory? It's like it's imposter like, syndrome. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, It's like feeling as if you're like not your best or like you're or like, not as good as yourself. Yeah, you feel like a fake. You feel like you're not truly, you're not deserving to. Right. You know. And and hopefully one, I mean, that shows that the creative community is like becoming one that's more humble uh, overall. If people feel like, oh, I'm looked at as this good, but I'm actually not that good. But I digress. Um. <laughs> Um, yeah, I always feel like I have such high aspirations for not only myself, but like my team, because Mm -hmm. I was focusing way too hard about how like the identity of MHS news was tied to me. And I was like, oh, if they're not good or if they're not as good as I think they should be, Mm -hmm. then that negatively affects me. Um, I was just like, uh, shooting a little too high and that makes things few that makes rewards like mental and physical rewards like too few and far be- between and i think um that it didn't stunt me because i continued to work i mean there was a time where i just like completely lost myself in my work and that was like one of the most productive times um of this whole mhs news thing but um i think just like not being able to like let go and um i wanted to take ownership of the things that we were doing but Mm -hmm. like really what we were doing was taking ownership of me Mm -hmm. yeah so how did you work through that then i just grew up (laughs) okay so so how did you overcome that struggle he grew up (laughs) i i mean i did i i did and and um a part of my uh teenage existence now and i don't say this to be condescending um is that like i look at the a lot of the people that we go to school with and i'm like wow you guys have like a lot of teenage problems mm-hmm. and like oh i don't my boyfriend and i are fighting or like uh my my mom grounded me and i feel like i grew up whether that was a conscious decision or not um to where i don't really have like a lot of those problems anymore um i have more like uh like work problems where it's not something that's like directly tied to my character it's like oh this is something that's dampening my performance how can i fix that um which in turn like made me start focusing on like developing skills um that help me solve other things and and grow other skills if that makes any sense yeah um so are you gonna answer any of these no i'm about to okay okay okay. yeah so my biggest struggle i think marta and i have the same struggle but from opposite sides so she said um hers was confrontation and i would have said confrontation too but i think in the in a different way because for her she said that she learned to lead with understanding and emphasize um that she was willing to help And so I think we're a little bit of the opposite because I think I'm naturally a very, like, compassionate, empathetic person and I struggle with confrontation, but I think she is more, she is very professional and, like, she's really good at handling professional situations. And so I think she has learned to cultivate more of, like, or bring out, like, the helpfulness when she's dealing with confrontation. And I think on the other end, um... I've learned that, like, I can be confrontational while leaning on my empathy. And so, like, I'm going to expand on that a little bit because I think that was a little bit wordy. But, um, yeah, I used to think that, you know, in order to get things done, like, I have to be more aggressive, maybe. But that's not really the case. And I think I've learned that um, I can get things done and be an effective leader while being empathetic. And I so... um, do you feel like Instead you were of, like when you were trying to be confrontational when you needed to be you were like kind of losing your other strengths and so that it was like not as I just didn't clear as you feel wanted. like myself and I don't even think I was just very uncomfortable I just didn't mm-hmm. know how to handle it and so now I like I've kind of learned that you know instead of saying like if someone misses deadline you don't have to be be like hey you missed deadline you disappointed us, like, or not, I don't know, like, you missed deadline, like, where is it? It should have been turned in two hours ago, whatever. Like, now I feel like I can say things like, 
hey, so I noticed you missed deadline and, like, I was wondering why that was and, like, what I can do to help you meet deadline. And, like, more of, like, leaning on, like, the empathy and saying, like, what can I do to be there for you? What can we do together so that this doesn't happen again? Like, that is just as effective. And so I think right. that my struggle was, like, trying to um, figure out how I can be direct and how I can make sure that people are taking me seriously while still being like myself. Being helpful. Yeah, while still being myself and being... Because I am, a, like, I'm a type two, right? Like, and I'm, I'm naturally, like a helper or like I, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I feel like uh, another thing that I learned was like, um, to like in the, in the case of like missing deadline, Mm -hmm. like when you come at them all aggressive and stuff like that, not you specifically, but like if one were attempt to do that, like people know, Mm-hmm. Like people know that they that they messed up, that yeah. they missed deadline, and, it's just, and so it's no like you're it, what you're not really p- proving any point other than that like both of you know that they yeah. missed it. So really, like there's a way that you can work through it while being helpful because it doesn't help anyone when you mm-hmm. miss deadline. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't benefit anybody that if you get frustrated with them. Um, really, it's just like you have to lay in like. The subtle, like, they know that you're disappointed that you missed deadline. But it's also, like, let's just keep, let's get it done. Let's, how can I help you get it done? And that's kind of your, like, your job is that. Exactly. And that is a perfect segue into this other question. (laughs) How do you create a sense of urgency when needing to get something done, especially during layout? You got to wake up. Without seeing panicked. Without being panicked. And, like, how do you get things done? Awaken the sense of urgency. When you are baby panicked inside. Yeah. I feel like that. Um, layout is just a perfect example of like mm-hmm. a setting where things don't ever go as planned and you could panic, but you also have things to do. So it's like, how do you get your staff motivated to get things done? So um, I'll, I'll start with this question. So, <laughs> um, so Marta wrote down a note on this and I think it's really true. And it's that like in the moment, um, like, Panicking is, like, an emotional reaction is, mm-hmm. like, what she was hinting at. And so, like, in that moment, we don't have time to think about our emotions and how we feel about something not being done yeah, because you just develop, it's not done. You, you just have to get a, it done. You ability to, <laughs> yeah. to put that aside, yeah. which is, like, like, something that many professionals... That, that's, like, a great skill that you develop while yeah. you're working on these publications is that, like, that stress deadline management. Like, if you're working an inside job that's, like, not a trade, like... Uh, a, a desk job or just anything that doesn't revolve involve you like using your hands or whatever like that's something that's a skill that almost everybody has to develop and um i don't i don't feel like we struggle to get that at all or that anybody yeah. really struggles it's just like oh here's the deadline like yeah some this xyz is Needs going to be wrong d- yeah it's exactly. just got to get done it's just like you just have a plan of action so i mm-hmm. think um when you're in that moment since like there's things that need to happen in limited time. You don't even think about your panic because if there's no point it's in being panicked, you're just like, okay, great. So we need to do this. So let's make it happen. And then you just like talk through and create a plan of action. And I think it's just problem solving mode. And mm-hmm. I don't, yeah. And I think part of that is like, it's, Im- I think we just recognize that panic is like useless in that situation. And all it's going to do is stress everyone out. And it, and like, honestly, as a section editor, you want an, an editor who's, um, who's making you feel like everything's going to be okay and, like, you're capable of solving the issue. It's not going to be helpful if someone's, like, freaking out who's right. like, who's supposed to be, like, encouraging you. you and know? that's that's why I said, like, you have to be selfless yeah. earlier because you have to you have to have the ability to just, like, set it aside and mm-hmm. be like, okay, in this moment I'm not going to be a robot, but I'm going to be, like, a superhuman and that's yeah. not – I'm not going to let that affect me because if it affects me, then people are going to see that and it affects other. It'll, it'll yeah, affect them. Yeah, exactly. That's very true. You're um, – the way that you are acting and, like, your mood and behavior definitely sets the tone of the entire group. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important to always have a high energy, which is hard, um, but it's important. So I think – I think we have time for one more Yes, question. which is great because the last one is – about friendships which we actually got a lot of questions about and so it's the idea of like how do you balance being friends with someone when you're also their leader and like can you know 
can it be difficult, but also um, do your relationships change? Like once, yeah. if you're friends with someone and then you are on staff with them, like stuff like that. I feel like I've learned so much more about this, like teaching the, the cadet teaching the intro class this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I work with a lot of freshmen and sophomores and um, I mean, I do teach them first semester, especially like Miss J and I were really co-teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't like a situation where like I would just be in the class and sitting there doing my own thing. Like I was involved and um, you you do like try to balance that. Um, you don't have to act any different. Like that's something that I never tried to do. And ultimately it worked out is that like, I'm Jackson and this is me. And like, uh, you know, I didn't have to be super serious or like be on my best behavior. I, you know, I'm not, I don't act out all the time. So like, I didn't really have to worry about that. Um, but I was able to like, spend time with them, like one-on-one, a lot of them and like help them editing their projects or like a couple Uh, I remember, like, even way back at the beginning of the year, their parents came in for parent-teacher conferences, and they were with them, and, like, while their parents were talking, I was like, hey, why don't you come in here, and, like, Mm -hmm. we'll edit while your parents are out there, and we just talk, and so it's, like, really, I think, like, building one-on-one relationships over Mm -hmm. time through, like, conversations, but also um, being able to, like, call people out when you're having those meetings and be like, hey, are we listening, or even, Mm -hmm. like, Miss J was... um, was absent for a couple days she was uh, out of town and um i remember we had a sub and that sub just kind of let me take over and do the sub plans as accordingly and um i was like trying to get them to read which like when you're a substitute teacher and you're trying to get a class to read and it's right before lunch like that's not possible impossible (laughs) but it had to happen because we have like 15 minutes you're not gonna waste 15 minutes so like eventually i did have to go into teacher mode and snap and be like hey if you guys don't read, I'm going to take the three of you and I'm going to send one of you outside, one of you in the office, and one of you is going to stay right here because you guys <laughs> are reading. You're not oh wasting this time. But, like, you, you have to – because that's what teachers do, you know, or good, yeah. in, in my opinion, good teachers. They have to have that ability to put in actual consequences that are, are felt. Um, yeah. Not being able to talk to your friends for 10 minutes as a consequence. Mm-hmm. Um, and so really you just have to be able to like put on your, your bulldog face and, and get it done. Yeah. But I feel like um, you said that you don't really necessarily have to be this like different person. Um, and I think I agree with that. But like Marta made note of this too. I think that when you do step into like newspaper um, or like when we lead class, we are editors and we are leaders and so we do I think like she mentions this too you do kind of have to be professional and like keep your and you have to make sure like if you establish that who are who you are in this room is the editor and like you are being you have to be professional because this is your job um then I think if you just keep consistent with that then like even your friends who are in the class who maybe you're leading like, no, that in this classroom, you're the editor, and so you're going to be doing editor things and be professional, and whatever they say to you, um, you know, you're not being, whatever you say to them, I mean, like, it's not to be taken personally, because you're treating everyone the same, and so I think treating everyone the same in the classroom, even if um, they're, like, your best friend or just another new staff member, is the key to kind of making friendships work, but I think that's for friendships that have already existed. Mm -hmm. And so I think like you and I, me and Marta, you and Marta, all of us like developed friendships because of staff. And I think those friendships were stronger because Mm -hmm. you work together. So you know how you are in a professional environment. And then you also get to know each other like in a personal way. And I think it's more meaningful. Yeah. This is going to have to be another part two because we're running out of time. No, I mean, we're done. Oh, we're done? We're done. I'd like to expand on that. But uh, Uh, thank you so much for (laughs) watching. And uh, I think we will do part two of this because I feel like we could talk more about that at the end. Yeah. But um, we're almost done, man. Almost done with this year. Yeah. Bye. Bye.